welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to show you guys my studio um also i want to give you guys a bit of an update my voice might be a bit weird i'm not feeling too well to be honest so that's the reason why the other update is unfortunately edward has passed away um so it hasn't been a good year for me just in general because 2022 was a bit rough i lost kiwi mid-january um, she had egg binding. She went to Millennial City Veterinary Clinic and she was under anesthesia, but she had a lot of hemorrhage and so she passed away. Then Basil passed away. Basil had gastric yeast. So while she was separated from the flock, I had to treat everyone because um, gastric yeast is very contagious. And when I took Edward to the vet, I thought that maybe the gastric yeast was a completely gone and it's actually really hard to treat i even have some youtuber friends over here who their birds passed away i mean if you guys don't know stacy is one of them her bird passed away her cockatiel because of gastric yeast it's very hard to treat to be honest so basil passed away and then edward um passed away edward had a heart arrhythmia initially i thought that gastric yeast wasn't completely gone with him but he had a heart arrhythmia. This wasn't new information to me. But essentially his heart got even more poorly. And because it wasn't beating properly. He had pooling in his abdomen. And they were having to use a needle, a syringe. To pretty much remove that excess fluid. Because it was giving him a hard time to breathe. And we did that for every 20 to 25 days. And each time we were doing it more fluid was being suctioned out so unfortunately at the very end stages his liver was also not doing well and he was on medication he was on med uh, the medication called lasik but you know there's just so much medicine could do so he passed away i do have a video on him it's already done i'm just dreading to upload it so yeah, there's that. He unfortunately did pass away. And I don't want to sound very depressing while making a new video. But he did pass away. So there's that. Um, so I'm just going to get with the more fun stuff. This is what my studio looks like. So I'm just going to start with the studio vlog and just kind of go over everything. And it's going to be very long. So this might be a very boring video. Uh, but the shelves are from Ikea. They're called the Ivar Collection or the Ivar Setup. Um, and the reason why I really like it is, as you can see at the back over there, there's like these holes. And if I need more space, I could just remove a shelf. But if I needed additional space, I could get these shelves individually. And I could just insert it, if that makes any sense. And you don't need any tools or anything. So it works up. It works really well. The forage boxes, I'm sorry, I just have it there very randomly. I did get um, a laser machine, so anyone who follows me on my Instagram account specifically for my bird toys will know about my laser machine. And these are some of the cool designs that I did. Oh, wait, let me put this here. These are, oops, these are what I'm using. Um, oh, focus. Um, these are the balsa sheets. They're 300 by 100 millimeter and these are four millimeter thick um i am getting them wholesale and those wholesaler ones i decided to go a bit larger so they're gonna be five millimeter instead which there's nothing with the full four, four millimeter but if i could go larger why not uh the only thing i will say about my laser machine that some people i think they may not know is that you need to know how to do svg files the reason is if you don't and you only have a regular PNG or like a JPEG file. You can't use the scoring and you can't use the cutting. Uh, there, it's really simple as to why you can't. But you can't individually pick out like... I don't... You know what? There's going to be some sciencey guy who explains this really well. But for instance, if I wanted this star over here. Um, let's say the star over here. A cutout. Uh, with a PNG file or a JPEG file, I can't click that on the X tool creative space. Um, some laser machines will have their own uh, software. Some you could pay, but let's just say on 
if I don't have an SVG file, I can't click that star and I can't say like cut settings. It just doesn't work. Um, so you need to have an SVG file. It separates each layer. That's the best way I could explain it. For instance, with this one, the same applies for that one. It, it uses the cut method and then for the inside it uses the scoring method by the way if you're seeing all these colors and you're wondering what are what are these colors i have my twinkle collection out that's why there's a lot of yellow and a little bit of pink and over here it makes sense to me but it, it's gonna look messy to you guys right so i'm just getting that out here out there for you guys um these are like everything i dyed and this is the same spaceship it's just oops it's just so much smaller so yeah um these are like more the natural ones i didn't dye them yet so yeah for instance this one doesn't use any scoring or engraving with my laser machine i just use the cup method and i use the cup method also in the center you might be wondering why there is a circle there it's just easier when you have smaller pieces to put like a small circle and use it as a cut method simply because when I put like a twine or a thread in between it's just easier um, so yeah that's that's that and I have a few other bits these solar flowers I didn't end up using so I'll probably put them as freebies uh, <laughs> so yeah um, these are my crepe balls I, honestly I might be pronouncing some of these very wrong Sorry about that, but I think they're called crepe balls, and they're solar. They're not any different than this. These are the Atta balls, but they're also solar. Um, so if your birds really like solar and they chew it in minutes, probably don't get the crepe one because it's more fragile. Try getting the Atta balls. They're a bit more sturdy, if that makes any sense. Um, I have some balsa cubes over there. Uh, at the back, I have some beads. These beads I got new. I got them wholesale. I used to... Oops. I'll pick that up later on. I used to get them from a different place in quantities of 100 and 200. But because I've been using them so much, I decided to do wholesale. Um, I got two variations. So I have 1,000 of this one, which is in a very... It's really heavy. I'm not going to even lie. It's so heavy. Um, and then there's another design. It's still the honeycomb design. It's just that that bead is so much larger. And when I come to it, I'll show it to you guys. So there's still balls over here. They're just in the color pink. Um, I have some solar flowers. I'll give you guys an update on solar just overall. Just bear with me. And then some stuff I've already, with my toys, completed them a little bit, sort of. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I have solar flowers dyed. Some natural solar. Oh, I forgot about this one. Um, this is one of my toys. I have to do drilling over here. Um, so yeah, these go like this. I am horrible at showing my designs. There's supposed to be solar in between them. They go like this and I sell them. I think they look really cute. So the stars in between is also also solar. It's solar and balsa, pretty much. And then over here, I'm not done these yet. Um, I was doing them last night. It's one of my cloud designs. This is what the, it looks like. It's so pretty. I, at least I think so. So there's so many more of this that I have to complete. And then, yeah. My crinkle paper, they're also from Uline. And then over here, I have some of my toy parts um so there's those pom poms i'm gonna show you guys a close-up they're so fragile so i don't really know what to do with them i might make a natural toy and then the natural edible and crepe ball um i call them the solar pom poms they're just circles <laughs> well not circles but you get the idea so i call them pom poms <laughs> and then these are the cubes again solar wine star is just different sizes these are the mini these are some people call them the intermediate some just call them like the three inch design so these are those um so yeah i am gonna give you guys an update on the solos and on my natural parts the prices have increased but that's not that's not to do with me <laughs> i love how i'm taking the blame off of me but it's not my fault i swear um so these are the balsa uh, I have the balsa in another room. Uh, I have so many of them, but yeah, uh, I'm not putting them here. It takes too much space. These are um, 
the word you can get them at home depot which is where i got them as you can see i have some more at the back uh these are by the way they're these larger ones sorry about that guys these larger ones are the same size that one's four by six and it's one inch thick these ones are six by eight and again they're one inch thick and then i have a design over here which writes sweet dreams and i would say that looks like a cockatoo right it kind of does look at that look at the feathers at the head it looks so cute so if you do want to get the laser machine and you only want to do engraving this is an this is an example of an engraving option sorry guys my voice it's been really bad um so this is on finished as i like to call it and these are sanded down now i have seen other sellers who don't sand it down and that's perfectly fine there's nothing wrong or wrong with like unsanded but here's my personal preference do you guys see how rough these edges kind of look like um i don't like that look now some people don't mind it it's just an aesthetic thing so Mines, I sand them down. Even the corners, I sand everything down. I personally think that it looks a lot better. That's just my two, uh, my personal preference. Do I have to do it? No. Does it take longer? Yes. But do I like how it looks? Yes. Uh, they just look a bit more rough, in my opinion. I like everything sanded down, and I don't do the corners. Uh, uh, I also do like the surface area. It looks better, and I feel like if I'm going to use my laser machine on it, it, something very smooth will look better, if that makes sense. So yeah, I prefer um, having it sanded down. These are just palm cubes. So, this area, what do I have? I have these beads, like I said, once I use them up, I don't plan on using them. Now, I have mahogany pods and slices. Can you guys see? Sorry, <laughs> my hand's in the way. Um, and the reason why I'm not using them as often as I used to, I actually have a lot of rabbit people <laughs> who buy my toys and mahogany pods, as I learned, um, and I did my research on it, it's toxic. So I feel really bad using them because they're completely safe for birds. So I just might make toys for my own birds, <laughs> which sounds a bit cheeky, but... My birds, Sky and Ocean, really like mahogany pods, so I might actually just make a toy for them instead. Um, I know, I put a disclaimer on my website saying that, like, all my toys are safe for birds only, because all these 100% safe material for birds, let's hope your bird uses everything safely, but uh, they're not safe for rabbits. So, and since I have been having some rabbit owners who actually buy toys for me, I feel it's a bit more challenging for me to use it, knowing that I know people that have rabbits uh, buy my toys, and some people may not know. With that being said, I have on all my toys a description area, and I list every single thing other than the food dye. The food dye is safe for every species, but other than the food dye, I pretty much list everything. And for the food dye, to anyone who's wondering, I use the Ameri color uh food dye it's just food gel i mix it with water with that being said i know some people use i'm not going to be able to pronounce isopropyl alcohol so i'm just going to say rubbing alcohol i probably even butchered that but uh people use uh, rubbing alcohol and food dye and the reason is because let's say i put balsa cubes in it well maybe balsa cubes not a good example i don't know which one is oh so corn husk, right? If I'm gonna dye the corn husk and I use rubbing alcohol and I dunk this in, any, I guess the way they explained it, many people who use that method, the rubbing alcohol kills the germs on, um, if there is any potential germs on the corn husk. It also kills any potential germs that are inside the food dye itself. Um, also, more, I think the main reason, to be honest, is because it gives more vibrant colors, which is a very good reason. The other reason is, which is also a very good reason, is because rubbing alcohol does not spoil as quickly, which brings me ne to my next point. I use a 115 ratio or like a 116 ratio. Once I'm done, the most I could store that water is probably two days. And I don't even go two days after 24 hours. 
I have to throw it out. Even if there's some leftover, I throw everything out. Simply because water and food coloring, after a while, it can spoil. So, I don't use it after that. But I have seen many people say, like, their water lasted, like, five days and stuff. I, I don't know. I just throw it out. There's really no good reason for it. Um, but it does spoil. Rubbing alcohol does not spoil as much. Um, these are the fluffy and cute um, wood that I got. The thing is, I haven't used them. I kind, I actually completely forgot about it, to be honest. Those are my Christmassy stuff, and to be honest, I didn't make good use of it, so I kind of feel bad. Um, these, oh my god, okay. Um, kind of rambling on, but I dreaded <laughs> doing these, to be honest. The reason is, they look so pretty, I'm not gonna lie, but it took forever, because I had to individually do these, and by the way, I didn't upcharge anything for it because some people, the more effort they put to a toy or to whatever they're doing, let's say they're into ceramics and stuff, the more complicated certain designs are or the more time it takes, they charge, which makes completely sense, um, no shade, nothing. I didn't do it, so there's that, but let me tell you, this took more than two days. I dyed every single wood, no, there's some natural, I think there's a 20 natural one, and it took me two days. So there's that, um, I didn't do any upcharging, because someone asked me, saying, are you going to charge extra for those? I didn't, but uh, to be honest, I'm not really planning on using this sort of method before, uh, next time, there's a reason why. So, basically what method I plan on using, oh, these look so cute. Okay, so these are my new axolotl designs, but they're not done yet, obviously. Um, I will have maybe some natural ones, but... Yeah, um, basically the method I typically use for my food, uh, for my wood, is basically dunk it in the food coloring. Um, I have been actually, when I was looking at this design, what I have been actually thinking about, it's not focusing properly, sorry guys, is maybe, they're not called things, you know the outer bits, <laughs> I'm sure there's a proper, proper term for it, but I wanted to do like a darker pink and then a lighter pink inside, but to be honest, after going through what I did with these, it might just end up being a one shade pink color and then there's the seahorse now the thing is with my two collections that i have they're going to be separate collections i actually don't know what color colors to go with um so yeah this is my seahorse for sure i know my axolotl is going to pink it's going to be pink and i know for sure my dinosaur which one looks like this where's the other one Eh, there we go. And then another one looks like this. I might do green and blue for my dinosaurs. I really don't know what to do my seahorse. Purple, blue, because it's like a sea concept. So if I do pink and then blue, I don't want the blue to clash with, like, the ocean blue. I don't know. Kind of complicated stuff. Not really complicated, but I'm probably overthinking it. These are just balsa cubes some vine of uh, uh i forgot twigs <laughs> hearts oh these are the larger bees i was talking about sorry this is gonna look very blurry um these are the larger bees the only thing is with the larger bees i have them in a smaller these are smaller bins those are the larger bins it's just that there were so many that i actually had to put some in a smaller one because i just had way too many um those are my solar flowers palm hearts and then the larger palm hearts focus please thank you and as you can see i have quite a bit oh dude there's the bees i stored them at the back and then these are like the palm rings fancy rings they're just palm and then at the back uh, it's hard to see but i have pine cones and then over there i have pine cubes so yeah seagrass mats and I have some random bits my seagrass mats, I have over 200. It's just that they're stored in a different place because I don't have a lot of space over here. So on this section, I have these. Um, this is craft paper that I have. Uh, I did get that wholesale recently, and I'm happy it turned out actually the way I wanted it. Uh, as this, I don't know if anyone's interested, but that's for my Avery, and I also got that from Uline. It's just easier. It's such a large piece. Um, and then over here, I have some different stuff. Um, I have these needles. 
they're not really needles guys they're very dull that sounds very dangerous looks very dangerous they're dull there's a reason why i use them there's the plastic versions and then there's some drill bits and a forstner drill bits mine was a bit more expensive essentially what they do is they puncture a hole so if you have been seeing holes in like toys and stuff this is how they do it um yeah it works i like it and then over here looks like a mess it, it's not really a mess other than that chain over there <laughs> i haven't stored it properly but these are some of the stuff that i use uh th the reason why i use a nice pick someone's gonna ask me which is also the reason why i use that needle is that that's how i poke a hole in between my atta balls and then i'll use that very dull needle to go through the same hole with a twine to pull it out the other end so fun fact that's that's why i have one i use it every single time it's very important i literally i i literally use it every single time and then over here i have twine some metal bits over there i have free stuff for you guys whenever someone orders i'll just make something for you guys and over there i have like my charger and stuff so this side looks like this wait let me do it slower so you guys don't really hate me <laughs> so yeah this is what everything on this side looks like and then i'll show you guys the table and my laser machine um the important update i have regarding my natural stuff soda and then all the solar stuff is that i kind of got cheeky with the solar so i will say what's happening basically all the prices on every single supplier that i know other than like the seagrass they're increasing their prices uh inflation whatever you want to call it right prices are increasing that has little to do with me with that being said my solar supplier their website is down and i actually heard this from another bird seller thank you for helping me out a little bit and she told me that they're increasing their prices so their website is gonna be down and she told me to get anything if i really need it because we apparently use the same supplier so what i have been doing is i went to their website and it was actually down by the time she told me because i went right away and then i messaged them hey is your website down and they said that the prices is still the same on Etsy. So I went on Etsy and I got a lot of solas because the prices have not increased at that point. But that's not to say that they are not going to increase. So I got like 100 edibles, 100 crepe balls, 100 flowers with bark and without bark. Um, just so I could still have some of the prices as before. But they're going to increase it. So the next time I have to get a next batch unfortunately the prices will be increased like i said that's not something to do with me uh everyone's increasing their prices the other thing is my um supplier where i get my vines and my palm flowers and stuff they already increased it in fact they increased it by 20 percent so there's that um that is on my newest twinkle collection that that did reflect on the toys the solas did not and this was a dilemma I was having because solas, they're very easy to, not ruin, but obviously shred. And because they're very easy to shred, if the prices are going very, very high, as much as I love them, I want to see what you guys have to say about it because, I don't know, like, I don't know if people would still be interested because on its own, it's still expensive. So I don't know, you guys will have to tell me. I really like them, to be honest um so yeah i'm only saying that for i mean so edibles and crepe balls are also expensive but mainly solar flowers that's because i think solar flowers are made for weddings mainly so because of that they are a bit my mom's calling me sorry guys they are a bit expensive so yeah look how pretty they look i'll go to my mom in a minute right it's so pretty i think so i really like them but i'm really sad that they're increasing their prices but I don't know. You guys will have to tell me what you guys uh, think. But yeah, solar pro right now they're not increased on my shop because I kind of got, like I said, cheeky with it and I ordered quickly at larger amounts. But they are going to increase once I'm like obviously out of stock with these. So this is what my table looks like. I actually just turned around my laser machine. Um, It used to be the other way around because whenever I would sit, I would just open it 
uh, open the lid from my area but I turned it around I think it looks better um, so yeah I'll get to that in a bit this is what my table looks like I have some unfinished wood uh, someone ordered my pine wood I just have to engrave it it's already sanded some twine a half done tent I just need the rope and like the star designs that's finished someone already bought it someone already bought it <laughs> Um, I had many people buy that one, so I have to make another one. It's already sold. I'll make a few more. And then all these are actually orders that I have to complete, which is kind of embarrassing because I'm not done with them. Uh, I have to draw them. Uh, so, yeah, this is kind of what my table looks like. Nothing fancy. Honestly, I cleaned it because uh, it looks very messy, typically, because this is kind of like, you know, when an artist come here and they have all kinds of paintbrushes, this is where I have all kinds of, you know, paper, rope, twine, everything. And just to make it a bit more presentable for the video, this is what it looks like. And this is presentable, I, I tell you, because normally it looks really messy. And then the outside is my garden. By the way, I'm in a sunroom. So anyway, it, a lot of people come through saying, do you work outside? I don't. Sunroom. It's clear. Um, it's just a window. So yeah. That's that, and now a bit more about my laser machine. So this is my laser machine. I have the X Tool M1 10 watt. Um, I also have the risers. Uh, to be honest, you could just pretty much go to Home Depot and is that. I think that's allowed. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I, it should be fine. Um, I'm not gonna start it. To be honest, I'm just gonna show you guys my setup and how I personally use it. Guys, I'm not feeling too well. So if I ramble on, I'm sorry. The thing is, I use this setup, which is what a lot of people use. But I also use the um, open plane. Now, I don't see a lot of people talking about the open plane method. And if someone has nothing to do with bird toys, not, like they don't even care. They're just here because they see that I use the tag x tool m1 open plane i'll use that because to be honest i couldn't find many people doing videos that was mainly talking about the open plane and like engraving on like pine wood that's pine so i'll show this purely for that one person who has been kind of struggling because i did struggle finding the settings so i'm just going to show you guys what i do pretty much i remove those and then i have this rope here fun hat a hat Having to put your fingers constantly over there, it's a bit annoying. You could use zip ties. I've seen someone use zip ties. I just have rope over here. Um, and yes, I did do that by mistake. As you can see, when I first got it, I did kind of struggle. The machine was working. I just couldn't understand what settings to use. So I'm just going to lift this. And I'm going to show you guys what's underneath for my open plane method. The method that I have been using. It's going to look weird. Just a heads up. It works for me. So I'm going to use it. So this is what the open plane looks like. Um, I have two coasters in here. Uh, honestly, I don't know how to explain it. I'm sure there's like a geeky guy here who's going to be able to explain it well. But for whatever reason, this is what works. It works, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest. It works. I don't know why, but it works. And then there's this. Um, this is the power setting side and this is the pressure setting side and then I put my wood over here by the way it's six by eight but it's one inch thickness and then I put it over here and then I engrave it now my laptop's not here obviously um, I'm using it to print out parcels uh, shipping labels <laughs> sorry guys but um, I'll just it by the way once you close it you see the same, there's like a camera inside it, you see the same thing on your laptop. So, this is the method that has been working for me. And for my drawings, I typically use, oh, I'll show you guys the exact settings, but like, I'll use like pressure 75 and like power 40 and, or I'll pr play around with it. Um, so yeah, this is what I have been using. And when I use that, I get something like this. Now, you could go, I guess, a bit darker. Like I said, I make bird toys, so everyone's... Why everyone gets laser machines is very different. Some use it just because of crafting and hobbies. Some use it because they want to use it for their shop. 
but these are the kind of designs that I make from it um, and it works for me um, I really like it to be honest I think it turned out perfect and like I said there are I think r rulers to help some people to decide on the I think the millimeter like I don't get it okay so I'm just being honest if a mess it works it looks weird I don't really care it works and just so there's someone who's a bit more like me who doesn't want to deal with all the sciencey sort of stuff with it and they want to know my pressure settings like I said while I'm rambling on I'll have it on the side um, and the reason why someone's gonna ask me why that metal black thing doesn't work and why I can't just put this on top it's because the wood itself is very thick so once the laser is moving this will actually move so that's why I have to use the open plane method with my balsa cube um balsa sheets it doesn't matter I could just use my triangular prism with like the metal bit and it works but not with these larger bits um, so yeah, I have to raise it a bit so the laser machine could detect it and engrave it. Because if I don't raise it and I don't move the coasters, it's just blank. So I'm assuming it has to be a bit more higher for the laser machine to detect it. So this is the method that I have been using. So my personal opinion on the X-Tool, um laser machine the m1 is that first of all it looks really sorry about my but it looks really pretty right to be honest it looks so pretty um it um some people compare it to the glowforge um, i guess so the glowforge is really expensive and for me personally it really depends what you want from a laser machine the one thing um i kind of was debating is if acrylics were worth it now with the x tool and one they use blue laser beam so you can't use blue acrylic or clear acrylics because it just beams off is the best way i could describe it like i said there's probably a sciencey guy who explains it better but to be honest i wasn't i wasn't about to pay six grand i'm in canada for the glowforge just for blue acrylics it didn't really make sense to me so i i honestly wanted it mainly for my balsa sheets and for my wood engraving and this is very well good um for my needs i'm giving it a 10 out of 10 honestly i use it every day the reason why some of my toys turned out the way they did and they look so goddamn pretty i'm not even gonna lie <laughs> i know it might sound bragging for my own toy parts but the reason is simply because I was able to do it with this laser machine. So 10 out of 10. The other thing is I have the hose over here. I open the, as you guys know, I'm in a sunroom. So I open it. Uh, the fumes are toxic. They're carcinogenic. So you do need to have an open space. They do have an air filter machine sort of thing. I am debating to buy it and most likely I will. It's just that I'm in Canada. It's very cold and my sunroom is not heated. And the other thing is, I'm close to now summertime, so I won't use it for the summer. But um, as fall comes around, I do plan on getting the air filter. Um, and I could take it downstairs and use it in a more well-heated well place. Because I do get a bit cold. Um, I can't stay here for long periods of time. Maybe two or three hours and then I'm freezing. So I'll go back inside. But... For next year, I do plan on getting the filter for it. Other than that, honestly, 10 out of 10. It works for me. I really like it. So there's that. Kind of rambled on, but uh, I really like it. So there's that. So this is the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it. I know I rambled on quite a bit. But yeah, this is kind of what my setup looks like. And I just wanted a video for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys do want some of my toys, I do ship internationally. Um, and I make bird toys. But for other species, just check the description and see if it's okay for your species. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.